Hi, my name is Tim Smets, software trainer at NDS. In this video, I will show you how to connect your Path 4 presentation to Facebook. But first of all, why would you use this? Well, a lot of companies already work with Facebook, filling it with posts, event details, pictures, etc. Perhaps even your own marketing department are already making posts on Facebook as well. So instead of teaching them how to work with Path 4, they can just keep on uh, posting to Facebook and all you have to do is connect to the work they already made and posted. The goal of this video is to show you the following. 1. How to connect Path 4 to Facebook. 2. Show practical use of Path 4 connected to Facebook. 3. Provide you with extra information. At the end of the video, you will have an idea how to combine your Path 4 presentation with Facebook, and at the end you might be able to create a presentation that looks something like this. In this presentation, I have two pages connected to Facebook. On this first page, three elements are connected uh, to Facebook. First is the text that belongs to a picture, the picture itself, and the number of likes of that picture. On the second page, I've created the top three of news items. And down below, we have a scrolling text uh, that scrolls through the news feed. To create a Path 4 presentation connected to Facebook, you'll need three things. One, a Path 4 designer. Two, an internet connection. And three, a public Facebook account. The Facebook page that we will connect to is the one from BBC News. So that's actually this URL. And the only part from the URL that we will need is this little part, so BBC News. We will connect to the various posts from BBC News, and we will also connect to the photos they've actually posted on the timeline. So those are these. So how are we going to connect to Facebook? To do so, we need a data provider. So we go in the ribbon bar to data provider, and we're going to press add. We're going to select the Facebook data provider, and start the data, data provider wizard by pressing next. Let's provide a logical name so that we know which is which. Facebook PPC News. Let's press next. Now, we need to authenticate, so we need to provide our account details from uh, a Facebook account. So when you press authenticate, you need to sign in to Facebook. All right, so let's sign in. And let's press next. Now, I've already shown you the Facebook page that we are going to connect to. Uh, we just needed that little part, BBC News, to connect to. So let's type in BBC News and press Load. Now, already connected to that page. Now, we can choose uh, various selections of sources from the page to connect to. To connect to the photos, to the posts, to the events, or the page info. Now, let's choose photos for now, and let's select a specific album. You can see that BBC News has lots of albums on, on their uh, Facebook page. For now, let's just choose the timeline photos. We have 5,982 photos in this album. Let's press Next, and let's press Finish. So now we have a data provider that's connected to the BBC News. Let's see what kind of data gets returned and what we would be able to use. So let's make this full screen. So this is data that we're getting back. The top one here is a minute silence. So the name of the, uh, of the text that's connected to the post. A URL of the image that we can use the number of likes it got, how many comments it has, when it was created, and then what album it is placed. 
Now it's time to connect some elements to the data provider so that the elements are actually connected to the Facebook page. On this page I have three elements that, are, that I want to connect to Facebook. First here a text element which has the text which is, is provided with the picture. Here's a picture element and this we will put the, the actual picture that's posted to Facebook. And here the number of likes, so how, how many times has this picture been liked. So let's open the uh, properties of the first text element. Go to connect it to a data provider. So external data from the following data source. Going to select Facebook BBC News, that's the data provider we just created. And from all the columns we're going to select name. Now in the picture we're almost going to do exactly the same. But instead of choosing name, we'll choose image. And because it's coming from the internet, it has to come from uh, it had, the content type has to be a file name. And for the number of likes, it's just selecting a different column. External data from the following data source: Facebook, BBC News, and then likes. And press OK. Now let's see how this looks. I'm going to preview the presentation. And we're here we have a presentation that's connected to Facebook. Here's the last picture that they've put on the timeline with the text that uh, comes with it and the number of likes. Now let's move on to see some more practical situations. Um, we have the Facebook uh, page BBC News, uh, which is uh, connected to the news, of course. Let's try to use it as a news feed. So we're going to add another data provider, select the Facebook data provider wizard. Let's give it a different name than the one before. Let's call this one BBC News Feed. Go to authenticate again. We don't have to do it all over again because Windows remembers um, it remembers your account details. Let's press next. Enter the Facebook page. And press load. Now instead of connecting to the photos again, let's connect to the posts. Let's press next. And let's make sure that we have the latest post first. So in order to do so, we have to sort the data. To press edit, and we're going to say sort it by the created date time. Let's make it descending so that the newest ones are always first. Let's press finish. And let's see what data gets returned. So we have quite a few news items, only uh, 100 because Facebook only allows 100 results back. And we'll see that it's the newest ones are here first. So it's actually sorted now by date and time so that we have the newest ones on a row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay, let's press close. In this presentation, I have a scrolling text element. And let's connect that scrolling text element to the news feed. So this way we will have the news scrolling by in your presentation. Let's open the properties. Let's go to data provider and connect it to an external data source. Connect to the BBC news feed data provider. And let's select, select the column, column message. We need to enable the data scrolling, otherwise you would just see one of the news messages. And let's make sure it's set 5 milliseconds, so that's pretty fast. Now let's see how this looks.
Now Facebook is famous for its likes. So let's actually make a use of that. Let's create a top three of most liked stories on the BBC news page. In order to do that, let's create another data provider. Select the Facebook, social media data with it. Press next. Let's give it a name, BBC top three posts. And press next. Let's authenticate, next, and connect to BBC news. Press load and select the post. So this is nothing new just yet. Now let's press next and next. And let's sort the data and let's sort it based on the likes. So let's make it descending so that the highest likes is at the top. Let's press OK and press finish. Now let's see if this worked and see if the most liked story is on row one. So this is row one. If we go to the likes, we can see that that's the highest number. And on row two, it's the second highest. And on row three, it's the third highest. So we can use this as a top three. So on this page, I have a few elements. I have three text elements and three picture elements and a little podium here down below now let's first make the the, the first one so a text element right here let's connect it to the top three posts and select a message as a column and row one of course because we want to have the most liked story on place one and we do the same in the picture but then for the picture column, which is over here. Now I'm basically going to do the same on the other elements, but instead of uh, choosing row one, we're going to choose row two and row three on the third place. So message and row two. And picture row two. And the same for third place. Data provider. Select the source, top three posts. Select the message and row three. Select the data provider. Three and select picture and row three, of course. Now we've created a top three most liked uh, news posts on the BBC News Facebook page. So let's see how this looks um, in the presentation preview. So now without actually creating content or um, adding pictures of your own, you have connected your presentation to just a Facebook page which is already filled with content. So without creating any content, you have a film presentation with pictures, text, scrolling text, news feed, etc. And there are two bits of extra information that I wanted to mention. The expiration date and switching accounts. Now you may have noticed that when we were creating a Facebook data provider that an expiration date was mentioned. Now this expiration date is two months after you've actually authenticated. And the expiration date is only something that you have to keep an eye on is when you are not using this presentation before the time has finished. If the presentation is playing before the expiration date has finished, it will renew that expiration data date automatically. So most of the time, this expiration date will not affect you or your presentation. 
it will only have an effect if you make a presentation and then not use it before that date. Now, another thing that I want to mention is switching accounts. Now, Internet Explorer, Pass 4 and uh, Windows want to make it easy for you so that you don't have to provide your details uh, again and again. So as you can see, even when I press authenticate now, it's automatically successful and I don't have to provide my details. But this also means that I can't switch the account right now. So what uh, would you have to do to make sure that you can switch an account? Is you have to go into Internet Explorer, go to the Internet Options, and delete the cookies and website data, because this has the authentication details. Let's press delete and go back into the designer. Now when I press authenticate, it will require my authentication details again. Now to summarize what we've just learned in this video. One, we've learned how to connect Facebook by using your account and connect it to a public page. And we've learned that it's quite easy to show the information in different kind of elements and even be creative with it by showing a top three of most liked stories, for example. I hope you've all learned how you can combine uh, Facebook with your digital signage system, and I'm looking forward to seeing your results. My name is Tim Smets, and I thank you for listening. See you next time.